So once again, I'm here with uh, Menas Kafatos, uh, professor of computational physics at Chapman University, and uh, we are talking this time about the relationship between space-time, gravity, mass, and the physical universe. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, let's just talk about time. Um, how do you define time in physics? Time in physics um, is defined uh, in Einstein's theory of relativity as the fourth dimension. Uh, we can visualize space, right? We can say, well, we have one dimension, depth, uh, height, second dimension, and um, width, if you like, uh, is the third dimension. Um, and all, all the three, all the objects we see are three-dimensional. Time is the fourth dimension. Now, how do we experience time? In everyday life, we experience it by the passage of time, so-called passage of time, which, of course, basically is... We change. Keep, it's, we keep track of change, yeah, right? Yeah, we keep track we of We keep track change. of change, that's what it is. So there is, in the Greek, um, Greek mythology, there is chronos, which is linear time, and kairos, which is relational time, uh, right? There is chronos and kairos, um, or kairos, and uh, kairos is um, the relative... Um, a more subjective uh, process time, so to speak. And How we experience it. Which we experience, and Kronos is the linear time that physicists talk about in, in quantum physics and relativity. Everything. But now we have this new nomenclature which says space time. Space so time. So space time is basically saying that uh, distance in space is also distance in time, right? Yes. And in fact, in black holes, you, you get some weird effects. The space and time can even become intermixed at some point. And um, according to relativity, if an object is moving at the speed of light, which is about 186,000 miles per second, theoretically, yes. then um, it, time comes to a sense. Time stops. And then according to general relativity, when you get very close to a black hole or the gravitational field becomes uh, dense, then also time slows down and actually in the black hole, itself uh, it stops right at, at the center the, of at the, black the hole. at this at the boundary mm. of the black hole which actually is still not at the center of the black hole the event horizon the so called event horizon uh, time stops but not for the someone who's fallen to the black hole mm -hmm. the person falling to the black hole they would still the they same would way. still feel the same way as any other day the people outside, observers outside the black hole, will never see the crossing of the event horizon. So both relativity, relativity theory and general uh, relativity, uh, special, special relativity, relativity, general relativity and yes. both suggest that actually um, there is no chronos. Uh, the experience of time is uh, subjective. And in the deeper reality, which is beyond space and time, but non-locality, there's no time or space. It, in fact, what seems to be uh, the limiting of the of the chronos or the linear time seems to be a limiting situation where uh, far away from highly curved space time, uh, like a black hole, or if you're not traveling with speeds close to the speed of light, then time um, appears to move linearly, and this is how we use we do physics. But in fact, in reality, really. Um, if you like, everything is a process time. Yes, but at the, at the heart of it all, at the most fundamental level of it all, past, future, and present are all part of the fabric of space-time as a potential. They're all part of the space-time continuum, as uh, relativists call it, and um, it is, if you like, the background on which events take place. And in Einstein's theory, both in special and general relativity, he keeps. He was talking about events, mm -hmm. things happening in space and time, which get recorded by observers in their consciousness. In, well, presumably, of course, in their consciousness. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now let's go a little further. It's the curvature of space time. Yes. Which to me is a non-visual experience. It's definitely non-visual. <laughs> okay, but it's a mathematical expression. Right. It's the curvature of space time that gives rise to gravity. Correct. And gravity, of course, gives rise to mass. Gravity gives rise to mass. Mass affects gravity. They are into a direct... Complementarity. Complementarity, one-to-one -one relationship. So mass and gravity are, in a sense, inseparable. 
And Mass the, and gravity are inseparable. And they, in turn, are the result of the curvature of space-time. Correct. And actually, we should probably use Einstein's own words. Um, he said that basically, um, uh, mass tells um, um, space how to be curved, and curved space-time tells mass how to move. Okay. So they're directly related. Directly. Into and they're all coming from this unmanifest field, which, which is spaceless, dimensionless, timeless, and give is giving rise to the whole universe. Uh, they presumably come from this unmanifest field, which at some point appears or manifests as what we call the space-time continuum. And becomes the perceptual experience of objects in moving three in space dimensional time, space. Moving in space time, doing some things, and those recordings, or when something happens, we call it an event. Mm -hmm. So basically, this theory of relativity is a situation where you have many events, they're observed by observers, and they record, and that's I mean, what... In, in physics, what you're saying is that the physical universe comes from an invisible domain, which is pretty abstract. It's space-time, curvature of space-time, and then a field of infinite possibilities, right Correct. at the heart of it, right? Correct. Correct. Infinite possibilities, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, because non-locality precisely means that. Correct. Although, in the theory of relativity, non-locality doesn't really enter, enter the picture per se, but of course, in quantum theory, it does enter. Okay, so essentially, we are giving a physics, cosmological, relativistic uh, framework for how um, the abstract invisible becomes the abst uh, becomes Correct. the concrete visible. Correct. Uh, and we are you're saying to me at least you're suggesting that the universe is more mind-like than uh, machine-like. The universe, uh, because it doesn't really have a, a substance per se. The substance, according to Einstein. It's nothing more than curvature of space-time, so it's very abstract, right? It's not, it's not material, um, and in fact, that is a, the, one of the big problems with physics today is that the theory of relativity and quantum theory have not been unified yet. To me, what you've described is how uh, the womb of creation, the cosmic mind, or God, actually becomes the physical universe. Um, would I be exaggerating that? Uh, it would be, uh, again, perhaps a poetic way to put it, but actually quite accurate in many ways. Thank you, sir. Thank you.